What's going on, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, and my target to review for this edition is Ghost in the Shell. Just got back from seeing that about, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes ago or so, so everything's fresh in my mind, but I have to admit, this is probably going to be a shorter edition of the Review Point podcast because I don't really have too, too much to say about it, actually. But if you don't know what a Review Point podcast is, it's pretty simple. I try to do my best to remember the things that I liked throughout the movie, which are hereby referred to as the hits, and the things that I didn't like, which are the misses, and kind of just group that all together and tell you whether or not the movie itself is a hit or a miss when you add it all up and you see what the sum of its parts are. And before we get started, I want to warn everybody that there will be spoilers, so if you have not seen the movie yet and you don't want to know what happens, but you still want to know whether or not you should see the movie, check out the Minuteman Review podcast. It's real quick, minute and a half long or so, and that will tell you whether or not it's good or it's bad. And if you don't care whatsoever about the spoilers, or maybe you specifically want spoilers to tell you whether or not you should see it, then by all means, continue to check this out. But in the meantime, I wanted to put that out there so you weren't Spoil in any way if you wanted to avoid that. But let's dive into this. This is a movie that I have to admit at first, I don't know anything about the source material at all. I have never watched the anime. I have never read anything if it was like based off of a manga or anything like that. I'm not an anime fan at all. I mean, period. Like, I don't enjoy the genre whatsoever. If you like it, that's cool. It's just not my thing. So I know some people are going to be looking at this movie and they're going to be comparing it to what came before it, saying whether or not it's good for the source material, it's a bad adaptation, it's a good adaptation. I do that with uh, comic book movies and stuff like that because that's my my thing. I don't know if this is good or bad when it comes to that because it's something that's completely foreign to me in like so many different ways. But I actually thought it was kind of interesting to go into this without knowing that kind of stuff because, I mean, the most movies that I see throughout the year are comic book movies and stuff. And I really know my Batman lore and I really know my Superman lore and my Spider-Man and all that. So when it comes to, you know, say Spider-Man Homecoming later on in the year, I'm going to be comparing things and saying stuff. I guarantee you this is going to be one of the things that comes out of my mouth that – Ned Leeds was stupid because why was he like the Gonke character instead of being the actual Ned Leeds? And why do we have Flash Thompson being the type of character that he is instead of a big bully? And, like you know, different things like that. I don't have a clue what is different with this compared to the other stuff. So some of it might have been an improvement. It might have been a downgrade compared to what it was before. I don't have a clue with that. So keep that in mind with everything that I'm going to say. And if you actually have followed the previous incarnations of the story and you've got an opinion about this whatsoever please leave it in the comments below tell me what you thought drop your comments whether or not you've seen those old things just let me know what you thought about the movie in general anyway but i'd love to kind of get an impression of what the people that were going into this liking the older stuff what they kind of thought about the whole thing so keep that in mind and all that but um diving into it from an outsider's point of view Honestly, kind of a mixed bag. I don't really have a whole lot of stuff I can talk about that I disliked, but at the same time, there's not a whole lot that I can think of that I really did genuinely like either. And that's not to say that it was bad. It's not to say that it was great. And that's why I'm kind of trying to mince my words here a little bit here and try to figure out a good way to explain it without over saturating it with too much praise and at the same time not giving it the praise that it's due. It's a weird situation where um, – let me let me put it this way. This is probably the easiest way that I can talk about it. I keep a separate list of the movies that I've seen just for my own records, just you know, outside of the website, nothing dealing with the fanboy stuff in general. And um, the way that I do that is a seven-point system that I can rate a movie. I think that five-point doesn't give you enough leeway for the things that are like – yeah, man, it's not quite a four and it's not quite a five. Where does it go? The four, four, four point five kind of a thing, sort of. And ten, you start getting bogged down in like, well, at that point, ten, nine, eight, and seven are good. And what's the difference between a seven and an eight, and an eight and a nine, and all that? Seven to me is like a good mixture because you've got one directly in the middle, and then you've got three in the top, three in the bottom. So. Basically, I've got it set as, like, a number seven is, like, the best, 
number uh, six is great. Number uh, five is good. Three is just okay because it's in the middle. And then we start getting into kind of like disappointing and then bad and then horrible. The way that I ranked this was in the okay leaning towards the good. It's not a bad movie. But it feels like it's all stuff that I've seen before. And that might just be because they've taken adaptations of this kind of story and they've applied it to different things over the years because I know that this has been around for at least a little bit of time. I'm actually going to try to look that up now where uh, that this originally started from. But I know it's not something that they just thought of right now. It's not like it came out, you know, 2016 and it's based off of, you know, like brand new fresh material. It's been around for a little bit of time. Some other things have taken inspiration from it. Now, apparently it's saying 1995 is uh, how this all started. So we've gotten even like The Matrix in the meantime that's been, you know, kind of spawned out of this sort of thing. So by now we've seen different things all throughout different types of movies where it's sort of replicating the same kind of plots. And even <laughs> to a certain extent, this is basically Blade Runner. Blade Runner is a movie that I am not the biggest fan of in the world, but I want to double check it again before the new Blade Runner movie comes out because at the same time, I haven't seen it more than once. So I don't know if it's something that's better on the second viewing or maybe I just missed something the first time around. I don't know. This felt like a Blade Runner movie or a Total Recall or, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of another movie that's kind of like that, like Minority Report or The Island. The Island's actually one of my favorite movies. And, um, Funny enough, it's got Scarlett Johansson in it. So I felt like I had seen this movie before in other movies and in ways that in some uh, cases it was better in those other movies, in some cases it was worse. And this was kind of like a hodgepodge sort of a situation. I hate that word. I don't know why I used that. But I will say one of the things that I did really like about this, and it's one of the hits, is that the premise itself is great. I mean, it's something, you know, I just said a minute ago that we have seen before, so if you've seen plenty of movies, you're going to go, oh, I get it, the whole, like, what's real, and, you know, trying to get my identity back, and all that other kind of stuff, but it's a classic story, so, you know, if it wasn't broken before, why try to fix it now, kind of, you know what I mean? I mean, how many movies have we had where it's the princess, or however you want to try to uh, uh, place her into some kind of a, you know, the the queen, the whatever, um, damsel in distress is needing to be saved, and the superhero goes to save her. It's a, you know, we've seen it a million times before, but it works. It's a trope that continues to work because it's a pretty soundproof plot device. And with this situation, you give me a premise of somebody who is a robot cyborg with uh, false planted memories and stuff like that, I like it. It's cool. And that's the reason why I saw this movie. I mean, if it would have been a movie about unicorns frolicking through the forest and how they need to save the forest from being burnt down by some terrible poachers or something like that, then I wouldn't have been watching this movie to begin with because I kind of don't give a shit. And with a, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, action kind of vibe, those are, you know, playing up to some of the strengths that I enjoy. So, yeah, of course I'm going to be interested in checking that out. So I like the the premise, and the execution of it was kind of hit or miss a little bit. There were some elements that I liked, some of it that I feel could have been done a little bit better with maybe like another rewrite or something, or maybe just a different director, but I can't really pinpoint exactly what the faults were, because I don't know what like the director changed from the source material, I don't know what the director changed from like the what the producers wanted to put in there, what the writer himself or him herself, I'm not even too sure about that uh, off the top of my head. Like, I don't really know where different elements were coming from, but for instance, one of the misses, the villain was just this stock archetype, evil white businessman who looks evil type of thing. And I mean, the very first scene he's in, you're like, all right, that guy's a bad guy. And he's going to be killed in the end because he can't survive. He's not even going to be one of those things. It's like he's so charismatic he needs to come back for like a sequel or something and we need to just arrest him. No, he's going to eat a couple bullets. So I didn't really feel like I really, really wanted to see that guy get killed because he wasn't in too much of the movie and he was just bad guy. You know, he really didn't have much personality. If he didn't have Mr. Cutter up on the screen in text for me to read... 
wouldn't have been able to even tell you that his name was Mr. Cutter at that point. Because I actually can't tell you what half of these characters' names are. I know Bato, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the friend who has, like, the, the weird-ass uh, eyes where he gets them all messed up. And he was all right. You know, he's generic, like, uh, supportive brother type, kind of. And we've got Saito was a character that just sort of, at the end, there was just like, oh, there's this dude. I don't remember seeing him around, really. And there was a guy that was in The Dark Knight and a couple of other things, and I don't know what his character's name was, but I like the actor. He's kind of cool. And then you got the uh, Silver Fox dude. He was dope. Um, but uh, I don't remember what his name was either. And I know that he was like the go-between with Section 9 and the Prime Minister and all that. So he was cool. But I don't remember what his name was. And I don't really know like if I'm missing something with uh, some of those kind of characters or what. But I liked them. I just didn't really like everything about them, sort of. And I felt like I needed a little bit more time with them, but also if they would have had more time into this movie, it would have dragged, because the pacing was a little bit off, and it kind of felt boring at times, even though there was, like, some cool shit happening. Like, I don't know, this is a real tough movie for me to review, and I apologize for the people that are like, you're not really getting real deep into this. I don't want to tell you that it's a boring movie, because it's not boring. It was just, like, kind of blah, like, very muted, I guess I can say. Like, you look at a movie like the Fast and the Furious movies, and I haven't seen them, but even just by the trailers, I can tell that they're fun, even if they're stupid. And you can see a movie like the Marvel movies, and they've got a lot of different mixed elements together. you got some serious things, like with especially with like Captain America, the Winter Soldier, but you've got humor and everything. And that acts like a little spice to punch things up. And this was virtually humorless. So it was all this meandering, monotone kind of humming, I guess you can say, throughout the movie of like the action didn't get crazy enough for me to really feel pumped, but nothing was boring to make me want to fall asleep. And it was sort of just coasted on these little rolling hills as opposed to these peaks and valleys and stuff. Uh, that, of course, the lack of the humor is a miss. Random side note, by the way. Um, <laughs> I don't know why the, the humor reminded me of it. What's up with all the other dogs? How come when she goes to feed the dogs, there's only one of them from then on? Did they all, like, get killed? Or just die because they were strays? Or do none of them like her and it's just the one of them? I don't know. Uh, fill me in about that if you know. But a couple other misses, uh, a couple other hits here. One of the big hits for me was the music, and um, I'm going to have to end up downloading that soundtrack because I want to listen to the score back because a couple different musical cues were making me kind of go like, ooh, that's pretty cool. It kind of reminded me of the soundtrack a little bit of um, Oblivion, that Tom Cruise movie, which that was an all right movie. That Actually, you know what? Ghost in the Shell and Oblivion can kind of be parallels to each other, although Oblivion, I think, was a little bit more fun because Tom Cruise is a little bit more magnetic of a star. And um, I like Scarlett Johansson a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like she's got any faults here. It's not her, but it's the material she's working with here. She was very stoic throughout the movie. So, you know, if you've got Tom Cruise doing a bunch of like, hey, you know, we're in an apocalypse, but let's have some baseball and, you know, uh, have a little bit of fun there versus Scarlett Johansson where everything sort of I'm upset and I'm confused and I don't know why, you're not going to get the same tone out of it. But I did like the music a lot, and I think that those two movies are kind of on par with each other, where it's essentially like, I know a lot of people compare Oblivion to Edge of Tomorrow, and Edge of Tomorrow to me was a much, much more fun film than both of these movies. And then you got Oblivion, which was a little bit more fun than Ghost in the Shell, but they're all sort of in the same range of quality outside of, I liked Edge of Tomorrow a, a little bit better than these two. And Ghost in the Shell has some great stuff, like the visual flair is fantastic. I mean, the the look of the suit that she's wearing is really cool. The buildings are all, they look realistic, although it's a little bit noisy at times, so I hope that our actual world doesn't get to that point, because I'm going to be really annoyed if that's the case. And I'm also glad, by the way, of course, spoilers, that they don't kill all her friends, and they didn't make it to where it was both sides were evil, and they're kind of pitting... Uh, her against each other for their own will and playing her and 
you know, it's, it's up against the world and where she only has one friend that she can rely on, all that kind of stuff. We've seen that before. And it was kind of refreshing to get it to where it's not just her and Bato against everybody. I don't like the government in a lot of different ways, but you know what? I'm getting a little bit tired of like every single movie that's like this being that the government is in on it. This time around, it was kind of nice to see that maybe, you know, the prime minister is not an evil prime minister. And maybe good old Silver Fox is just a badass with a revolver. And he likes Major, he's supporting her, he's saying fuck you to the bad guy, which who, by the way, uh, bad guy, by the way, has this awesome little room that he's hanging out in. I totally want that. That seems so relaxing. So, I mean, this is a weird situation where I said in the Minuteman review, I would recommend people to see it if they like this kind of a movie and this sort of genre, but I also can't say to see it with the same kind of oomph that I've been doing with some of the other movies recently. Like, Logan is like, oh my god, you should see this. Even if you are not the biggest X-Men fan, it's really cool. And Lego Batman, it's a lot of fun. Kids are going to love it. Power Rangers is like, this was a big surprise, and it was really enjoyable. That's still my, uh, probably my favorite movie I've seen this far so far this year, as far as, like, pure entertainment value. I gotta put this a little bit more on the the side of Kong Skull Island. We're actually maybe a tad lower than that because Kong Skull Island had its fun moments and this was lacking in that humor. So it made that a little bit harder to get into. And if you are not the biggest King Kong fan, which I'm not the biggest King Kong fan, then that makes it a little bit more acceptable for audiences to kind of take that sort of taste Ghost in the Shell seems like it plays very much to its audience. And if you're not into that kind of crowd, maybe you're not going to really enjoy it as much. So it's something to keep in mind. But if you are not a big fan of that stuff and you did see the movie and you liked it or you didn't like it, I want you to tell me what you thought about it. And um, my gun to my head is going to say that this is a very, very minor hit. It's going to be one of those things where it's like, yeah, you technically... You technically get, did a thumbs up job, but at the same time, I can't really endorse you for all that much. And uh, I want to know what you have to think uh, about this. So drop those comments below, as I said, and tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, anything in between there. Be sure to stay tuned to the website and the YouTube channel for more stuff coming your way. Just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well, so you get notified of everything else that pops up. And whatever else is going to be happening next, that's when I'll be seeing you guys. So this has been another episode of The Review Point. I'm Tony Mango, and I'm a fanboy. See you next time, everybody. Geeks out.